Welcome back, everybody. My name's Jamie, and this is my friend Graceland. And today we're going to talk to you about how God speaks. We're going to look in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 6 through 15. So grab your Bibles and follow along with us. Um, we do have a remember verse, so I'd like to read that to you today. It's found in Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I love it just like last time when you heard it. It's so good to know that God is here for us and he's the one who gives us comfort and strength. So I hope that you can rest in that this week. Um, so we're going to be talking about how God speaks. And it's pretty cool to think about. So, Gracelyn, I wonder, have you ever been on the phone with your parents and they've called you and they didn't even say who they were, but you knew it was them? Yes. Yeah, it's like if somebody calls you from the other room and you know who they are, you don't have to have them say, it's your mom on the phone. You just automatically know, right? So, God wants that for us. He wants a relationship where when he speaks, we recognize his voice or the way that he communicates with us. So today we're going to talk about that more because he wants to be able to have us listen to him so that he can guide and direct us in our daily life. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and close our eyes and ask God to teach us today, okay? So let's close our eyes. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that you are a living God and that you've sent your Holy Spirit to speak to us. I pray that while we listen, we will learn what you have for us and get to know you better through your story. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to talk about how God speaks, and I need your help and yours to remember what to do when God speaks. So whenever you hear me say God speaks as we go through the story today, your job is going to be to put your hands behind your ears like this, and you'll say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Good. So let's practice one time. And at home, I hope that you'll join us so that you're following along. Here we go. God speaks. I'm listening. Perfect. So that's how it's going to be for our whole lesson. Okay, so I told you we're talking about Paul. And it's part of the Big God story where the Holy Spirit comes and leads a man named Paul who is traveling with some of his fellow believers throughout um, Galatia and Macedonia to spread the good news of Jesus. So here's a map of Paul's travels. So as they traveled, they paid really close attention to the Holy Spirit as he was guiding them to show them exactly where he wanted them to go and to speak. So God speaks. I'm listening. Good job. <laughs> so Paul had wanted to go to Asia, and God actually didn't want him to go to that place. It was the place that was west of Galatia. And here it is on the map. And the Bible says that they came to the border of Asia and tried to enter, but then God spoke to them because God speaks. I'm listening. Good job. So let's look in chapter 16, verse 7, to see what it tells us about the big God story. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So the Holy Spirit actually stopped them from going to this area. So instead, Paul and his companions waited for the Holy Spirit to lead them to somewhere else. They ended up stopping in this city called Troas, and we're going to hear a lot of different cities today, so log it in your brain for how to pronounce places that you might not have been to before. So they stopped in Troas to spend that night, and that night God spoke to Paul in a dream. Follow along with me in Acts 16 verses 8 through 9. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. So after the dream, 
Paul had seen the, after Paul had seen the vision, um, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Paul heard the voice of God in his dream. So here's the question, and this is important. Um, did God use words to tell Paul to go to Macedonia? He didn't. He didn't. So just like today, God didn't use words to speak to Paul. He used a dream instead to communicate what he should do. So he spoke without words, and Paul followed the Holy Spirit's leading that way. There's a lot of different ways that God speaks. I'm listening. So after Paul and his friends sailed away from Troas, they arrived in a city called um, Philippi. And it's a place in Macedonia, which is actually in the country of Greece today. So here's a picture on the map. And so it was a very important city during that time because it was a place where the Roman military um, was housed with lots of different soldiers from the emperor's wars. It was also very important to the Roman Empire because the people there did a lot of business. So a lot of Roman citizens lived there. So here are a few different images of the ruins of Philippi as it once stood. And it's really cool to see the different um, perspectives of the size of these buildings and to consider the architecture and the way they created this place. It's a place where Paul traveled. So just enjoy these images. So Paul and his friends stayed in Philippi for a few days. Let's go ahead and look in Acts chapter 16, verse 13. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. So instead of finding a group of Jewish men, they actually found a group of women. And it was actually odd during this time for a man to have a long conversation with another woman. But Paul and his friends sat down and talked with the women about Jesus. Sometimes you'll be surprised when God speaks. I'm listening. Let's look at what happened in verse 14. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. So to make purple cloth, women like Lydia would use these crushed shells called a murex. And here's an image of a murex. So because the crushed shells leaked purple color, they would use that color to dye the cloth. So the shells were super hard to find. Maybe that's why Lydia was actually in Philippi because she had to travel away from her home in Thyatira to get to the shells. Also, you needed a lot of water in the process of crushing those shells to get the dye out. So we just read that as Lydia listened to Paul talk about Jesus, God opened her heart so that she could respond to Paul's message. And she came to trust in Jesus as her savior. Let's look at the map one more time. Okay, so take a look at the town where Lydia's home was located. It's right in the area where God had actually told Paul not to go. It's really neat. He had a plan all along, just like we've always taught you guys, God does have a plan. So right in the area where God had told Paul not to go share the good news, Lydia was from there. So God brought Lydia all the way to Philippi. She had to travel and sail to Philippi so she could hear about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit opened her heart to believe. God knew exactly where to send both Paul and Lydia. God speaks. I'm listening. <laughs> Let's look in verse 15 to find out more. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. 
After Paul left Philippi to follow the Holy Spirit to other places, Lydia and the people of her household worked with other new believers to start the church in Philippi. And we know from Paul's letters to the Philippians, which are found in the book of Philippians in the Bible, in the big God story, um, it's in the New Testament, we found out that this church was a very loving, caring, and giving church full of joy. They often sent gifts to Paul during his ministry. So throughout this part of the big God story, we see how God actively led Paul and his friends to certain places and to certain people. They just had to be willing to listen to him. God speaks. I'm listening. <laughs> so he spoke to Paul hundreds of years ago, and he speaks to us today, you and me and you at home. God is always available, and he's willing to speak to us, and all we have to do is listen. We can listen for him, and we can trust him to lead us. So like God did great things through Paul, he can also do great things through us. Okay, so I have an object that I want you to draw. So what you'll do first is draw two ovals that are like an inch big, side by side. With a, like a, about a centimeter gap between them. Okay, once you've done that, draw a thick line that connects both ovals. Just from the outside edge of each oval, and it's kind of a thick line. Okay, on the oval that's on the right, on the outside edge, like close to the edge of the paper, I want you to draw a line at like a 45 degree angle going down a straight line and then um, kind of like three inches long and then draw a line that's still attached to that one at like a vertical line straight down from it. Okay, so they can be a 45 degree angle down mm -hmm. then one straight towards the edge of the paper? Yeah, that's only like an inch long. Other one is, how does that work? The other line you draw? Is it's it? about an inch long and it's just straight vertical. Vertical. Can it be the line that came off the edge of straight? Mm hmm. Okay, now on the other oval, the one on the left, on the outside edge of that oval, I want you to draw a mirror image of the line that you just drew, the same exact thing. Tell me when you're done. Um, I'm done. Okay, so each oval, what I want you to do is sort of just like sketch shade in the ovals to make it just a little bit darker. Alright. And once you finish shading it in, you're done. Do you have any guesses? It looks kind of like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm, I want to look at it. Oh. If you didn't have the little 90 degree lines, what would you think you were looking at? Yes, it's sunglasses. It's totally sunglasses. You did really good. Thanks. Really good. Okay. What were the 90 degree angles that you were so trying to get? So I was trying to get you to go 45 and then down from here to be like the little hook that oh. goes over the ear. Okay. So there you Got go. It. Okay, here we go on our next drawing. This time I get to find out if I'm a good listener and Gracelyn will do the speaking. So here we go. All right, first you're going to want to draw a circle about three inches in diameter 
near the top of your screen, leaving about maybe an inch or two. Okay, I'm drawing it. Next, you're gonna to, you're to want to draw an oval, kind of maybe uh, five inches long at its longest point, directly underneath that circle where it's overlapping a little bit. Under it? Under it, yes. Then you're gonna to want to draw two long ovals, like maybe an inch wide and then four inches long on either side of your long oval near the top where the circle and the oval connect. Next, right at the base of your oval, you're gonna wanna draw two, another two long ovals, maybe just a little bit shor shorter than the top two. And those are gonna be at the bottom of the long oval on either side. <laughs> now we're now we're gonna go back up to the top circle and you're gonna draw two little half circles right off the side near the top of the circle. Um, so it's parallel but at the top to the two long ovals that you have connected to your main oval. Half circles? Half circles. Okay. Now you're gonna wanna go to about the lower quarter, no, the lower third of your circle, and you're gonna wanna draw a triangle. And then directly above that triangle, you're gonna wanna draw two little circles off-centered to that triangle. And then you're gonna wanna take your little marker and you're gonna wanna make a little half, not complete, like a little segment of a circle, two of them, going towards the sides of the outer edge of the circle, connecting to the nose. Nose? Yes, yeah, so it's like one of those train track pieces that have two pieces coming off of them going in opposite directions. Okay. All right, now we're done. Okay. I think I drew a bear! Yes! I did! <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> Poor oval arms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul and his friends heard what God was saying to them by listening to the Holy Spirit. Today we talked about some of the ways that we can listen for God's Spirit to speak to us and lead us. Like when we played that game and we were trying to draw what we heard and we had to listen. So, um, it was, was it easy or difficult for you to do that? Um, it was a little bit of both. A little bit. Like once I got the hang of it, it was a little bit easier. Yeah. So listening to the Holy Spirit isn't necessarily difficult, but it does take some effort on the part of the listener, right? Definitely. Yeah. So even though it can be a little bit difficult, God loves us so much that he wants us to be able to hear his voice and to be able to speak to us. And he wants to lead us. He wants us to know his voice, just like when you hear your mom or dad call you on the phone and recognize their voice. He wants us to know his voice. So here we go. I would like to share this verse with you today from Isaiah, Isaiah 30, verse 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I love that verse. It's so good to know that if we listen to God and hear His voice, He gives us guidance on what we should do with our lives. In these times when it's hard to know what to do, we can trust that God is speaking and that if we listen, we can know what to do. So today, may you hear God when He speaks to you, and may you respond in obedience, and may you walk in His way this week. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's always good to know that we get to learn more about God every week.
go ahead and look in the Parent Weekly so you can find more discussion questions and activities and crafts to go with this lesson. And we will see you next time. Bye.